Good morning. It's good to see you for chapel today. It's an exciting time for Joe Ligo to be our chapel speaker. And uh, Joe's got his computer up here, so I'm thinking I could really play with his mind today and, and change it, uh, go to something else, put someone else's sermon up, and uh, wouldn't that be a lot of fun for Joe? So. Uh, folks, it's great to have you here. A couple quick announcements for you. If you are interested in participating in a work trip this spring break, uh, we now know the locations that all the trips are going to, so we can announce that. Uh, we're going to be uh, going to Maryville, Tennessee, which is in the Smoky Mountains. Cool place. And we're going to be going to Georgetown, South Carolina, which is north of Charleston, south of Myrtle Beach somewhere in that neighborhood. And so both are Habitat for Humanity opportunities, uh, building projects, and if we get more people than we have space for, because right now their trips are limited to about 40, um, 20 in each trip, uh, we'll look at a third option. So uh, we always have a third option out there hanging in the wind to see what's gonna happen. Uh, also, if you want to do a trip, but spring break's not going to be when you're going to do it uh, because you have other plans or your student teaching, you actually can go during the winter break. Uh, we have a team that'll leave around January 4 and be back before classes begin or if you're student teaching, hopefully back before student teaching begins. And that team is going to Hilton Head area uh, in North Carolina in, is that right? North Carolina? South Carolina? I don't know my area down there, I guess. So, uh, But great opportunity to go down and do some mission work there as well. Uh, part of that work will probably be in the Hilton Head area. Some of it may be in Savannah, some of it may be in Charleston, just wherever they uh, send the team to work, that's where you end up uh, doing your volunteering. So a uh, few opportunities for some good stuff to happen and you to be a part of them. Um, our speaker on Friday is Emily Wiest, and so we invite you to come to chapel on Friday and uh, be a part of that one. And then uh, we also have our Board of Trustees in town this weekend, so on uh, Friday especially come out to chapel and get to know some of the board members who will be here. And if you see them around campus, so welcome them back to campus. It's uh, never a bad thing to get to know a board member who might help you get a job someday. So uh, use it as a marketing time. <laughs> Mark it yourself. Uh, folks, as we gather today, how about if we pause for a moment and I'll offer a word of prayer and then uh, we'll turn things over to a little bit of music and scripture and then uh, we'll hear from Joe. So let us pray. Lord, as we pause in the midst of a, the beginning of a week, a week that will be pretty busy for us, we give thanks to you for opportunities to come and worship you. May our time together be filled with grace, be filled with new revelations of your love, uh, be filled with uh, ways for us to uh, know and see you in the world. So we thank you for Joe and for his message today. May the words that come from his mouth be words that you have put upon his heart. Lord, we're grateful to you. We pray your blessings upon us as we move through the week. Uh, may this be a week filled with many successes. We ask all of this in your son's name, and together we say, amen. Today's scripture reading will be from Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. The parable of the talents. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with the two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. 
Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. The master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers, so that when I returned I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For everyone who, will be, who, for everyone who has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I have the pleasure of introducing your speaker today. Uh, he has been in my classes for the past three years, and even before that, uh, he showed up on my doorstep and was participating in History Day here at Westminster and produced a documentary in high school that was clearly head and shoulders above what the other students had produced. His work, Eve, from a first year student up to now, has been above uh, the standard. He has set the standards, he has broken them. He and fellow students have been uh, the recipients of awards for their works in video production and in radio production. Uh, Joe has been one of those students that I could say, I recognize who is much smarter than I am. Uh, but he's well grounded. And so with that, that these, these talents of his um, come great responsibility. Borrow something from Spider-Man here. And I think that all goes back to his upbringing on the farm. If you didn't know, Joe is a cat guy, not a dog guy. Uh, he worked on a story about cats on the farm and he was a perfectionist. He would not let that story go until he was done with it. I said, it's done, let's use it. He kept working on it to make it the best he could. He, he doesn't settle. He also says yes to everything. Uh, he wants to do well. He is a team player, but he also excels when he works by himself. Uh, his passion, his work ethic, and his faith, I think, are all uh, outgrowths from his life with his family on his, and on the farm. And so uh, we'll be saying farewell to Joe soon here in the Westminster community. And while you might be able to take the, f the, the man off the farm, the farm is always going to be with that man. And I think all these wonderful out attributes that we, we recognize in, in Joe uh, will carry on and they will uh, affect others. And I, I have to say that when he's gone, there'll be a big hole in our department. There'll be a big hole in my heart. Uh, so with that said, I'd like to introduce Joe Ligo. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out this morning, and uh, specifically the brothers of my fraternity. I'm glad none of you have burst into flames yet, like we joked about. <laughs> but just in case, Rob Brooks is a firefighter. <laughs> Fame is a four-letter word. And like tape, or zoom, or face, or pain, or life, or love, what ultimately matters is what we do with it. This is how Fred Rogers addressed the audience the night he was inducted into the Television Hall of Fame. Amidst a crowd of Hollywood's biggest celebrities, this quiet man from Pittsburgh calmly stood up and politely told them they had gotten it all wrong. He went on to say how those of us in television are called to be servants of the people, to satisfy the deeper needs of those of us who watch us every day and share with them what the good in life is all about. 
A mere six months before I started my freshman year at Westminster, I remember sitting in this chapel watching that speech for the first time. David Newell, the man who played Mr. McFeely, was visiting Westminster to talk about his time working on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Work has always been a crucial part of my life. Ask any man with the name LIGO and you'll quickly realize that his life revolves around what he does. My own father works harder than any person I've ever met. It's a relentless attitude driven only by a pure love of what he does and a love of those he does it for. I feel the same way about my work. Those who know me best know that I'm happiest when I'm working. Few things bring me as much joy as creating videos, seeing stories come to life as they're pieced together. I've spent a good deal of my college career doing just that, making videos, and I loved it. I think this is why that parable means so much to me. The pastor at my old church always told us to ask God for the strength to do something big for something good. Just like the servants in the story, the Lord has entrusted all of us with something. It is our responsibility to be productive with it. Interestingly enough, the version we read, uh, instead of referring to the money as bags of gold, it actually refers to them as talents. Coming into Westminster, uh, I was, or at least I thought I was smart enough, probably you would call it being cocky, enough to realize that I had a little bit of talent. And thanks to the wise counsel and hard work of people like Mr. Weaver and Dr. Barner, I was able to actually turn that talent into something. I've learned far more than I could have ever imagined. And I loved being here. But in my junior year, things began to change. I, for some reason, felt as if I'd reached a plateau almost. I was struggling to fulfill all my prerequisites before my senior year, and as a result, I wound up in a lot of classes I didn't like. I'm sure you're all used to this, uh, especially students my age who are you know, taking swimming the second semester of their senior year. Um, but, but anyways, a, a certain amount of frustration began to settle in. I was spending a lot of time doing what the college said I had to do instead of doing what I thought I wanted to do. And during that time, I became enamored with these stories of people who found fame and fortune with their videos on the internet. You know, that's something that's emblematic of my generation. This idea that here, college degrees and internships and networking, none of that mattered. Anybody could hit the big time with the right combination of luck, skill, and, you know, cats. <laughs> and, and I wondered, I wondered, as I spent hours sitting in these classes, uh, what did these people have that I didn't? And by spring semester, I, I was downright afraid. Uh, the hours I spent in the classroom felt like hours wasted that could be spent working. Yeah. In my room at Theta Chi, I would lie awake at night, staring into the, the light on the ceiling, wondering when my time would come. Wondering if I would ever be good enough to break through and really do something grand with my life. I'd become paralyzed by this other four-letter word, fear. Oblivious to my own situation, I allowed this fear to envelop me. Soon the fear turned to doubt. I doubted that I would ever get a job I would like. I doubted that I had the skills to be successful. I doubted that my future would be as exciting and fulfilling as I had hoped. I doubted I would ever really break through, as they say. And this crushing doubt did a lot of damage in my life. It, first off, stifled my creativity. Uh, it brought me to this unhealthy level of introspection, which those who are closest to me know that I spent a lot of time worrying about nothing. And it caused me to hurt someone who's very important to me. I was afraid I would never have the, my chance to do something big for something good. At the age of 21, with my whole life in front of me, instead of being optimistic, I was rather bleak for a while. And looking back at the parable, we see that it is fear, not incompetence, that brings the third servant to ruin. It's not because of his lack of ability, it's because he's afraid of his master, afraid that he will be unable to please him, so he hides what he is given. And sure, this protects the gold, but it doesn't do anybody any good when it's in the ground. 
The servant claims he buried it to keep it safe, yet the master sees his true intentions. He calls him wicked and lazy because he was too scared to take on responsibility. We aren't told what the third servant did while the first two were out earning money, but it's unlikely he spent that time working. Our goal should not be to survive this life, but to use our time on earth to do good. We need to use our work to make a difference. Perhaps somewhere along the way, all these stories of YouTube celebrities had gone to my head. I was afraid of never reaching that elusive fame and fortune, neither of which are necessary to make a difference in the world. At its peak in 1985, only about 8% of American households actually watched Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And he certainly never got rich, even with his sponsorship from Eaton Park and Sears and Roebuck. Yet, his impact has been tremendous. He never tried to be a star, he just wanted to serve others. During the summer, I came to a realization. I don't have to have my entire life planned out at the tender age of 21. We celebrate people like Mark Zuckerberg, who struck it rich at a young age, but for most of us, life takes a slower pace. George Lucas made a lot of movies before he made Star Wars. Besides, if the most amazing part of your life happens before you're 30 years old, what do you have to look forward to in the next 50? There's excitement in starting this grand new adventure post-college. I've given up this fear and doubt because I have work to do. And this work will bring us joy. When the first two servants return to their master, what they ha and they show him what they've earned, he praises them. And he, he says that he's going to give them more to be in charge of, and he, he asks them to come and share his happiness. Their hard work comes with a big reward. I encourage all of you to pray for the strength to do something big for something good. May your work help others and bring you satisfaction. My only true desire is that in the end, when I finally meet him, that he will look on my face and say, well done, good and faithful servant. Joe, thank you so much. Uh, I remember when Mr. McFeely was here, and I remember looking out because I knew your parents and I knew you were coming to Westminster at that point, and, and I could see these bright little eyes that were hanging on every word that night, and I knew that at that point you were thinking, can I be like him? Can I make a difference like him? And God does take us, and sometimes we get so focused on that journey of where we want to be that we forget about all that goes between here and there. And the people that we get to meet, your brothers, your friends, your, your uh, faculty members. And sometimes we are so focused, as you said, we treat them well, and sometimes we don't treat them so well. Um, always remember, don't step on people, folks. Always remember to be humble. Always remember that the gifts you have are gifts given to you by God. And it's not about you, it's about service of God. And that's what you've kind of spoken about today. So thanks for taking this parable and making it come alive for us through your life. I think it's interesting that when you were just getting up, behind you was uh, a picture of the big city. And then the picture of the, the farm, the, the field came up. And for me, that ties you together because there's this dream of the big city and there's this farmer that just won't quit. So don't herd cats, don't chase cats. Allow your dreams to be God's dreams in the future. So, well done, friend. Folks, as you go out today, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord give you his grace. Amen. Have a great week, folks.